Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. Onion Lake RCMP are asking for your help in locating a man wanted on multiple warrants. Police say Matthew Faithful is wanted on warrants for several charges, including resisting arrest and operating a motor vehicle while pursued by police. Faithful is described as First Nations 5 foot 9 and 190 pounds. He has the name Matthew tattooed on his left arm, a scar on his left forearm and Faithful tattooed on his upper back. He's known to frequent the Onion Lake First Nation, Frog Lake First Nation, Lloydminster and Edmonton. If you have any information, you are asked to call police or Crime Stoppers. Edmonton police are investigating the suspicious death of a young boy. They were called to an apartment building around 830 this morning where emergency workers say they found the child in distress. Sources say the child later died in hospital. It's believed he was the victim of a drowning. The boy is around eight or nine years old. Earlier today, a woman believed to be the boy's mother was taken into custody for questioning. Police are calling the death suspicious. They say the father was not home at the time. This is what police and neighbors had to say earlier today. To receive the call um, of a child, about a 78 year old boy in medical distress. Uh, we responded to the apartment building you see behind me. Uh, the child was transported to the U of A hospital uh, where he was pronounced dead. Uh, we uh, are just in the very preliminary stages of, of investigation here. We would at this time classify it as a suspicious death. Well, I heard some sirens uh, and that woke me up. It was about 8, 30 somewhere in there, but I never heard anything else. The official cause of death will be determined by an autopsy. There is no word on when that will take place. Well, Alberta's Auditor General says Alberta Health Services has some work to do to rebuild public trust. Merwin Sawyer says it is in the last year he found cases of AHS employees buying unauthorized items, taking $1,000 plane rides from Edmonton to Calgary, and in one case charging taxpayers to fly their own private plane. He found oversight was lacking in $100 million worth of expense spending at AHS. He said in one case a health facility was shuttling patients around in $300 taxi rides because they figured it saved money. Back at home now, the city is looking to paint the town pink, all in support of putting an end to bullying. A proclamation was made today marking February 27th, Anti-Bullying Day. Mayor Jeff Mulligan met with several organizations to sign that proclamation. Organizers say they have plenty of activities planned involving the color pink to create awareness about the important issue. We are having everything from cotton candy going out to students to pink shirts from the co-op to pink armbands that were made by the schools to pink bubble gum to uh, just a number of different things. Students reaching out and being ambassadors to younger students and talking about the issues. It's, uh, it's gained momentum every year and it seemed to be really gaining traction in Lloydminster and we've had orders coming in from Lashburn and Neilberg, all sorts of communities so it's really gaining um, it gained some traction and some momentum in the region. We're, we're proud of that. It's, it's an important cause. On February 27th, everyone is encouraged to dress in pink to support the cause. Well, the warm weather today was the perfect backdrop for continued Carnival celebrations throughout the border city. Our Bart Patiastic was at Ecole Saint Frontier today, where it's an extra special event. This is the first time it's been able to hold an event at its new location. Full of energy, the students of École Saint Frontier were greeted by Benham, who is the official mascot of the festival. This afternoon, the school set up their sugar shack for the kids to enjoy. This is the first carnival for Tamika and Brianna Thomas, but they caught on quick when it came to the sweet stuff. They warm up the, the maple syrup and then they pour it on the snow and then we grab a popsicle stick and then we roll it up in the snow. The school has 75 students right now, and that's a big jump from the just two enrolled when it first opened a couple of years ago. Principal Paul Thoreau says he appreciates the extra room their new facility gives them. 
certainly a lot better than what we had before where we were located downtown and had no schoolyard so we're taking full advantage of a the nice weather and b having a a schoolyard which finally meets our needs and the parents that came to volunteer noticed the difference as well. Uh, well, last year there were uh, less students. Um, I think it was on a smaller scale. I think uh, as uh, the years go and more and more parents are getting involved, there's going to be uh, more and more activities. Thoreau says the future of École Saint Frontier is bright. Uh, we have very much of a community feel. The Francophone community in Lloydminster never really had a, a centre or a, a focal point before, and uh, École Saint Frontier is providing that. But for now, these sisters are just happy to celebrate French culture with their schoolmates. I like it. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Bart Pediasic, UCAP News. Now to this week's pet project, where Jenny and Allison introduce us to some local pets looking for their forever homes. This here is Sadie. She's 10 months old. She's a German Shepherd lab cross. She's spayed, she's microchipped, she's up to date on vaccination. She'll just need rabies. Sadie is a really good listener and she aims to please and we can tell that she's really smart. She loves to be around people, children included, and we can also tell that she's good around dogs. And she's just a really good girl that needs to go to a really good home. This is Zippo. He's a year and a half. He's neutered. He's microchipped. He's up to date on his vaccinations. He'll just need his rabies and he's very vocal. Yeah, purring included. And he's also very cuddly and we think he'd probably do really well with kids as he tolerates being picked up and handled quite well. But we think that he'd probably do best in a home where he's the only cat. And if you think that Zippo is a good match for your family, come on down to the SPCA and come see him. The SPCA's Comedy Cabaret is coming up on March 30th. Yes, tickets are $55 each, and guests will enjoy supper, silent auction, and awesome entertainment. And you can get tickets at the SPCA, or just call the SPCA for more details on where else you can get them.